Hi there, this is a quick video on how to make chestnut flour using forage chestnuts but I'm also going to experiment using shop bought puree too. We're out and about looking to source some chestnuts and see what we can find. There's some good ones about if you look. Easy pickings. Once you've got hold of them, you need to cut a little cross in the top. What this does, it means it helps the skin to come off when they're cooked and also helps the steam escape so they don't explode. Now what you need to do is put these in an oven on a baking tray at about 200 degrees centigrade. That's about high 300s Fahrenheit. Here we go, 25 minutes later. These are obviously wild ones. If you buy the really big shop bought ones, you might need to leave them in maybe five minutes more. Now I've just brought them outside to have a little cool down and then I'm going to start peeling them while they're still warm. It's easier that way. There we go. And if you give them a quick squeeze before you peel them, it gets most of this skin off. A bit like when you take the skin off garlic. So there we are, all finished. I've been breaking it up as I've been going along, so I'm just going to take out any stray bits of brown skin and then put it through the blitzer. And then finally, after all that, you put it in a dehydrator, 40 degrees centigrade, which I guess is about 100 or so in Fahrenheit, and you do it for about eight hours, just basically doing it so it's bone dry. And once it's finished, after it's a little eight hour drying session, you can hear how dry this stuff is. And then it's just a case of grinding it down how fine you want it. I mean, it goes almost like polenta here, but you can grind it down to a quite reasonable flour. You can get it quite fine if you persevere. And now to try the puree. I'll put it on a perforated piece of greaseproof paper within the uh, dehydrator like I did the other stuff. Just before, I'm using a greaseproof sheet, but I'm just going to squish it on just like this to thin it out a little bit. And then with the dehydrator tile, I'll just have to check because I don't really know with this. Is that a way off? Yeah. So about two hours at 40, which I then decided to put up to 60 for another six hours, and that's what it's like. It's come out a lot harder than I thought it was. The idea think, behind this was that because it was a puree, then it might be a little softer to grind, but that feels pretty much the same as the forage chestnuts that I've got there. Also, it looks like the uh, husks are left on because obviously it's a very brown colour compared to the foraged ones. Taking a fair old bit of effort to grind down, I thought the puree might have been uh, substantially quicker. Maybe a little bit quicker, but nothing massive um, compared to the uh, foraged meat. Um, I suppose the only thing is this, if it has got the husks on, it might have a little bit more fibre in it. Well, having thought that my chestnut puree experiment was going quite well, which is that return there, I've now decided that these are like rocks and I've spent an hour and a half hitting them to get that little amount out so I'm calling a day on that that's just not going to work um, that 200 gram puree pouch has only yielded about 20 grams of um, flour so the naturally sourced chestnuts are going to be the the way to go in future and now we have it the two different flours presumably that one's with the husks on and that's the naturally foraged ones just there now I'll use these for bannocks, that's what uh, the purpose of me doing them was in the first place. Um, high in protein, gluten free, but you will need to put other flours with them to make the actual dough. Not the most exciting video in the world, but hey, it's worth doing. <laughs>